Hey everyone, welcome. Fred here from AF Math and Engineering, and we are going to do uh, a problem on torque diagrams. Okay, so we're going to show you how to draw the torque diagram. Okay, and we're going to show you how to do it the easy way. And when I say the easy way, I mean the quick way that you should be doing it on the midterm, not the long equilibrium equation way, which is just you know a little bit unnecessary in these types of problems. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's get started. Let's see what we're given here. Okay, and we're given a, a shaft here, and the shaft has five different torques, external torques acting on, on it. Okay, so, and those are all labeled here, A, B, C, D, E, and uh, they're all in units of kilonewton meters. <clears throat> okay, so the question asks, draw the torque diagram and determine the maximum torque transmitted at any transverse cross section. So, let's go ahead and let's start with the first part of the question, which is we're asked to draw the torque diagram. So let's go ahead and start with our torque diagram, okay? I'm going to show you just the real quick. Now, we did do a video before on how to do, use equilibrium equations and how to not use equilibrium equations when drawing a torque diagram. So refer to that if you do need a little bit of a, a brush up, but I'm going to go over it again in this, this video because this is important. So when we're drawing our torque diagram, okay, we're going to draw kind of a positive and a negative axis, all right, and we're going to just draw a line across like this. Just extend that just a little bit. We have a little more room here. Okay, so we're going to label our torque diagram. Okay, so this is positive and this is negative. Okay, and this axis here is going to represent our torque. Okay, so this is our torque here. Okay, and that is in kilonewton meters. Okay, so that is our up and down axis or our y axis. Okay, our x axis is uh, just going, going to represent where we are on the, the shaft itself, okay? So let's go ahead and let's start by labeling our points accordingly, okay? So we have A, B, C, D, E, so that's where we're going to transfer over to the torque diagram here. All right, and let's go ahead and get started, okay? So the sign convention, when we're, when we're writing it without equilibrium equations, okay, is going to be that in this direction, okay, in the clockwise direction, all right, that the, the, the direction for the torque is going to be positive. That, that would be a positive direction, okay? So if we were going to do equilibrium equations, okay, it would be reverse of that. And like, like I said, we did a video of that before, but we're not going to do equilibrium equations again in the torque section. We're just gonna do it the quick way, and uh, this is all you need to know, is that when the torque is in the, in the clockwise direction, we're going to consider that positive. Okay, so we can kind of, we have a, uh, a rigid support there, okay? And another way to think of it is that if we use uh, the right hand rule, okay, when our thumb is pointed towards the support, rigid support, okay, that we're gonna consider that our positive, all right? So that's another way to think of it if that helps. So let's go ahead and start drawing our torque diagram. So we have a 30 kilonewton meter force and that's in the positive direction and that is between A and B, okay? So we're gonna, we're gonna look at it as if we're going down the shaft in this direction, okay? So we're going from A to B, so the torque from A to B is going to be 30 kilonewton meters. Okay, so that's 30 kilonewton meters. All right, so now, what do we do next? When we get to point B, okay, you'll notice that we have a 40 kilonewton meter uh, torque, but that's in the opposite direction, okay? That's counterclockwise, all right? So our thumb's pointed away from the rigid support. So that means that we're going to, at point B, subtract 40 from 30, right? So we have 30 plus negative 40, and that is going to cause us to come down here to 10, negative 10 kilonewton meters, okay? So negative 10 kilonewton meters, it's negative, okay? And let's go ahead and we'll quickly go to the next one. So that's between B and C when we get to C. Okay, we have 15 kilonewton meters. That's in the clockwise positive direction. So all we do is add 15 to negative 10. That's gonna give us positive five. And that's going to continue all the way until we get to the next torque, which is at point D. Okay, and we have five here, right? And as we can see at point D, we have a positive torque of five. So we're gonna go up, we're gonna go to 10, okay? And these are both positive. And finally, when we arrive at 10, you'll see that, lo and behold, we have a negative 10 torque, okay? And that is going to bring us back to zero. 
and that is a good check to see that you've done your torque diagram correctly, okay? And it's that when you get to the end, the final torque should bring wherever you are in the torque diagram back to zero, okay? If it doesn't, then you've done something wrong. That means that, you know, the, the shaft is moving and, and it's not, the shaft is never, you know, has any net movement or anything in, uh, in this part of the course anyway. Okay, so that's good. We've done our torque diagram, that's finished, all right? And we've labeled our points, we've labeled each of our, you know, sections within the torque diagram, and now we're asked to determine the maximum torque transmitted at any transverse cross section. So, the, what we have to do here, okay, is we're asked for the torque. If we're asked for the shear or something like that, we'd have to use an equation um, utilizing the maximum torque. However, this question just asks for the maximum torque, and these are all units of torque, okay? So all we need to do is we need to select the largest number on this diagram. Okay, so it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. Don't make that mistake, okay? In this case, it just happens to be that 30 is the highest number out of any of these. But if there was a negative number that was more than 30, that would be the maximum torque. The negative sign doesn't mean that it's, it's smaller, it just means the negative and positive in this case just denote a, a direction of the torque. That's all the positive and the negative are for in this case, okay? So if we go ahead and we look, we see that 30, okay, is our maximum torque. So our T max in this shaft is equal to 30 kilonewton meters, okay? Perfect. Now, one more thing I would like to point out before we finish this video up, okay, is you'll see that the, the shaft in this case has two different diameters, okay? So A to C is different than C to E. In this particular question, that did not come into, to, into play at all, okay? And in, uh, in later questions where you're asked to find the shear stress, you're gonna have to use the diameter of the shaft in order to find the maximum, uh, maximum shear or something like that. But in this case, um, this was just kind of put in there to, to throw you off a little bit. So look for that in the test, you know, um, the, the differences in diameters don't affect the external torques that are acting, or the internal torques either, all right? So, all right, thanks for watching. I, uh, I hope you guys really, you know, followed along there and stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching.